Hola, muy buenos días. Es temprano y sé que todavía está. Good morning. It's early and I'm aware that uh, there are people that are still coming in, but I wanted to start on time. I welcome you to this first day of LACNIC, uh, third day of LACNIC uh, 41. I'm Laura Kaplan and I'm going to be the master of ceremonies in this session. For us, this is a very touching session because we are celebrating the 20th anniversary of this Frida uh, program. We are going to celebrate uh, our 20th uh, year uh, that um, um, supports um, the year consolidation of programs for an open, stable uh, internet. I remind you that we are going to have simultaneous interpretation into Spanish, English, and Portuguese for all our participants. Without further ado, let us start uh, with the, the session celebrating this 20 years, and I invite Arturo Servin, who will be in charge of uh, this uh, first uh, space. He's uh, a uh, uh, network uh, uh, architecture specialized in internet peering. At present, he's uh, who works in, within uh, Google, and he has more than 20 years experience working in challenging networks and projects on complex communications. Arturo has been jury of the FRIDA program for many years, and we are very happy to have him here for this presentation. Arturo. All right, so I'm very happy to be here at LACNIC after many years that I wasn't able to come, and I'm very grateful to LACNIC for having invited me for this presentation. I hope you won't regret it. It's an honor to be asked to do this, and I hope I'll do a good job. And as I was telling you, I'm very, very happy to be here again with all of you. In addition, I am proud and honored uh, for having been appointed for this. I hope I don't disappoint you. Because the FRIDA program is very important in the life of LACNIC, many, many things have been done. And so for me, it's such a pleasure to be here again. Before I start, let me see. Well, it's 9 a.m. and you are here very early. That means that, well, maybe you saw on the agenda, you said, oh, FRIDA. I, I go and, and see Frida. How many of you have seen, well, not necessarily know what Frida is, but if you've ever heard anything about Frida, raise your hands. Okay, okay. And who know what Frida does? A, f a bit fewer. And who knows what Frida means? Because in addition to being the name of a person, it's also an acronym. Who knows uh, what uh, Frida means? Okay. Well, Frida is the fund. Ah, okay. I knew this would happen. <laughs> I knew it. I had it. I saw it coming because I brought it here. I knew that uh, in the heat uh, of the discussion, I was good. It's a regional fund for digital innovation in Latin America and uh, the Caribbean. I had learned it, but I knew this would happen. So it's just when you're there taking a picture and you close your, you shut your eyes. Well, it's exactly that. Well, that's what Frida means. So for those of you who want to know a bit more about Frida, the Frida program and its its mission is to contribute to an open, global, stable, and secure uh, network in Latin America and uh, the Caribbean, supporting institutions that drive the project. So we support. Uh, continuous and uh, scalable uh, solutions. Um, so basically what we do is we support programs or projects that promote digital innovation in Latin America and uh, the uh, Caribbean. So we, uh, as you were told, it's, we're going to turn 20 years and 186 projects have been uh, supported uh, uh, with different categories. The largest one is uh, where most of the support is given is through grants. An organization that has a project for 
development in Latin America for digital innovation. They send a request. Uh, there's a jury that uh, reviews, <coughs> reviews it, and then they decide whether to give the grant or not. And then we have the awards. They uh, give awards to the projects that have some type of uh, that drive some type of digital innovation in Latin America. It's important, in addition to supporting these projects that somehow are going to have an impact on the community because of the innovation they are introducing. It's also important to recognize the projects that uh, have collaborated and that have had an impact in the uh, digital development in the region. And finally, we have uh, the scale-up category that is much smaller, and it, it is the projects are, uh, that already existed in Frida receive some additional support, some additional funds uh, for uh, uh, some things. But this is a small category, and uh, it comes and goes. And I think that at present it's not operating as such. But it's one of the categories that we've had uh, some time or other in these 20 years. Oh, and I was forgetting almost three million dollars. So these 20 years, Frida, with the support of uh, the ERDC, the IRDC, the IRDC, um, again, I am uh, um, said it wrong, uh, IRDC of Canada and uh, LACNIC, uh, and well, they have uh, supported with the funds, so I want to thank the three of them for these funds. I think that LACNIC and all of us are very grateful to IRDC and the Internet Society and LACNIC for these funds. The beginnings, 2004. Does anybody remember what you were doing in 2004? I barely remember what I did two days ago, but I don't know whether you remember what was going on in 2004, but I wanted to give you some references of what was happening then, that is the origin of the FRIDA program. Google, well, still had uh, those colors. Today, you are fed up, of, uh, you, you see them everywhere, but LACNIC was blue and yellow. That, that's this logo that was used until 2012. Now, very interesting thing. We had 1.7 uh, IP before addresses. Do you remember uh, 1.7 billion addresses of IP before? Almost 2 billion, and people said, well, we're never going to run out of them. Nothing's happening. The Internet had about 800 uh, million users, and LACNIC only had nine employees. Some of them are here. We, we we are seeing them. So that is what was happening in 2004. So in, 2000, in 2004, the, uh, FRIDA was created as an initiative of IDRC of Canada and ICA and managed by LACNIC. So those were the origins of FRIDA in 2004. Let's go now to the first half of the decade. Or, uh, in uh, 2004, uh, Frida was created in 2004. In 2006, the Internet Society um, appeared as one of its uh, funders. And in 2009, we no longer had 800 million, but 1.7 billion, twice as many. In five years, they the size of uh, the internet users uh, duplicated. And in addition to IP, do you remember that we had almost 2 billion addresses? Well, in 2009, there were only 55 million left. Uh, 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 and there, there were important changes. iPhone and uh, Android, the revolution of the Androids, uh, the networks uh, changed from 2G to 3G, and the mobile data uh, boomed. Um, so that uh, required more IP addresses, the internet grew, and based on that, the programs or the projects that Frida was funding will start uh, to take shape, and we'll see that uh, their shape uh, changes with time. And now Frida, uh, well, Frida, uh, the, the 
um, very, worked mostly with small grants and the deployment of IPv6. We saw the internet uh, was growing. We were running out of IPv4 addresses, and well, we saw then the deployment, the deployment of uh, the IPv6 addresses. So, and uh, in addition, then the uh, DNS uh, and communication. Uh, communication security projects. And here, as Laknik was saying, the DNS projects started in this decade, then they disappeared, and they reappeared a few years ago. What happened? I, I really don't know, but it's a funny thing how DNS, I think it's a natural thing because DNS is a key part of the internet system. So now that uh, the internet was growing and duplicating, well, that is part of the critical infrastructure. So it's absolutely sensible to think that it was very important. Well, then it turned into a co commodity, and now it's uh, reappearing. And there are also uh, projects related to community networks, and this is because of the growth of the Internet uh, and because of the importance of the Internet. It's no longer that network uh, at the universities and the offices, but it's what people carry in uh, their phones. And especially f the isolated communities needed to continue to develop digitally. And there are also grants focusing on education, robotics, and uh, teaching skills for the use of the Internet. So the Internet is already permeating uh, all, everywhere. So these are some of the changes that we see in these five years of uh, the early steps of Frida. In, from 2010 to 2015, in 2010, they incorporated the prices. Up to 2010, we only had grants for projects. In 2011, I don't know whether you remember, the, then we had the World IPv6 Day, when uh, and uh, every, people were expecting things to uh, uh, crash. But uh, then in uh, 2012, uh, well, the IPv6 was left on forever. And by now, LACNIC was turning 10 years and changed the logo to the current one. And they published the first RFC on RPKI. So we see how the internet is maturing. The projects that we're sponsoring or supporting now are in infrastructure and access. And the issue of cybersecurity starts uh, be becoming a very important thing. And because uh, uh, the internet matures and uh, as Frida does, well, they both mature. And we start seeing those small details uh, related to the infrastructure of access, the critical infrastructure, and security. So we did the fine tuning of the internet that all of a sudden began to grow as an enormous monster and we then started to figure out what we could do in order to improve that situation. So there's one line missing here, but in 2014 we ran out of addresses. So 10 years ago we had 2 million addresses in 2014. These were no longer available. So internet began to change, it began to change and become something that grew very much and that exists out there and we sometimes and somehow to figure out how to use it so then this category of scaling ups and subsidies was created as well as research products today we have a focus on finished projects which shows the maturity of the frida project where we support is provided to projects that have a kind of a conclusion. So these are no longer technical projects. It's not just the network engineers who wish to do projects with Frida, but this is also part of the civil society. So now we have issues regarding public management and online governments, health and education things started to go over to other areas. It's not just about the technical community that is using the Internet, but everyone is using the Internet. So we go to 26, 2019. Am I going to fast? I want to finish on time, but I'm looking at the interpreters who sometimes get mad at me. <laughs> so 2016 to 2019. 
In 2016, IPv6 adoption reaches 10 percent, and I mentioned I did not mention this in the previous night. In 2011, it was less than 1 percent. So, five years later, we have 10 percent of IPv6 adoption, and LACNIC and Frida do some changes in the categories of the different themes. So. From 2016 to 2019, there are several changes. There is an adjustment of the internet and the internet of things that are happening. So Frida, which is part of its DNA to adopt and see the changes that take place in the society and in the internet and then adapt the program depending on the needs in 2017, LACNIC reaches 7,000 members and the award for women in technology is introduced and the projects also include gender gap issues we see that there is disparity so we have to work in order to make things far more equal so we also have projects where there is a prevalence of the civil society this is a stage of growth of optimization of the human side and not so much of the technical side of the internet and in 2018 we are like Uh, I was uh, it was expected that we wanted to speak about IPv6 and RPKI in Frida, but in 2018 we saw that from the entire IPv4, the IPv4 space has valid ROAs, 10% by 2018. And 2019, one of the stages of Frida comes to an end with the Internet Society and the IDRC, so that fund is comes to an end. So at that stage, Frida now is like a young adult. It's when you like when your kids grow, you're grown up. I helped you although over these past years. You are now an adult. You can go out and earn your living and do something that is useful for society. So it's part of Frida's growth where LACNIC then starts to provide the financial support for this program. In this category, we also have many projects for ac internet access, implementation of solutions for accessing, for example, community networks. And in the years from 2020 to 2023, there is a support to provided to network communities to implement access solutions. But initially, it was just having a community network. Those are things that are more specific. For example, to a community of f uh, fishermen or a community of farmers so that they can measure temperature. I don't exactly re remember the names of the projects, but these are very specific projects for very specific needs to have access so that it's not just about access to the internet but response to some very specific needs to provide that access. So we now have the new era of Frida from 2020 to 2024. Do you remember what happened back in 2020? Something that was called COVID pandemic where a lot of things happened. Well, that happened in 2020. New categories are defined which are internet stability and security, access to internet, and free and open internet. So there's a major change in Frida. Frida is a mature adult now, fully established, and with 100% of support from LACNIC. Between 2021 and 2022, we have this issue of the Bitcoin. During the pandemic, you didn't have GPU, and if you like to do gaming, you're going to suffer because the GPUs were in the hands of gaming. Now it's the machine learning people who have adopted this. Now, in 2021 and in 2022, there is a whole lot of information regarding cryptocurrencies. But that's not what we're concerned here. There's a technology that we have down there, which is blockchain. And people started saying, well, how can I use blockchain? That sounds interesting. How can I use this for other purposes other than cryptocurrencies? 
And then another issue of 2022, a mass of research uh, comes up in terms of security. They are researching how to use blockchain for something, for security or other issues. So there is an important growth in that area. And one of the reasons why that takes place is it, well, the, this has to do with the cryptocurrencies. In 2022, LACNIC celebrates its 20th anniversary. And finally, in 2023, the non-financial technical support option is created. There are other important projects that occurred over this uh, period. It is remote peering on internet routing, measurements and latency studies, data protection and privacy. So this is how things evolved over the past years. So these are the highlights of FRIDA over this period. And finally, support has been provided to 1,158 applications. 52 projects and LACNIC has contributed more than $1.1 million. So Frida has become consolidated and receives 100% support from LACNIC. So that would be my presentation. Now, before leaving, I'd like to ask you to give a big round of applause to LACNIC staff, which have worked tirelessly over all these years on the Frida project as well as all the members of the jury. I couldn't mention every single person. And LACNIC staff, there is staff that worked for FRIDA in the past and people who worked for FRIDA. So a big round of applause to staff, to the winners, and everyone who has supported the FRIDA program over the past years. So thank you very much. I hope I haven't, uh, I have honored Lachnik's request to make me do this presentation. Arturo gave us a trip through the different stages and milestones of the FRIDA program, but let us have a look at the next coming, the coming 20 years. FRIDA wishes to continue contributing to this, Fernando Orjon will be speaking about some of the future outlooks, some of the ideas regarding some of the topics that Frida might consider from now into the future. Fernando, you have the floor. Thank you, Laura, and thank you, LACNIC, for this opportunity to participate and to give you some ideas about the future. Speaking about the future is always an interesting adventure like Reid Bradbury saying, and how he taught Jules Verne, and we saw how far he went with his submarines and travels to the moon. I will ask you to embark on this travel, but a bit different. So I work at UBS Partnership. I'm a senior consultant. I'd like to thank LACNIC once again for this opportunity and the people with whom I have interacted. Access Partnership is a company dedicated to formulating policies on technology together with the governments and with the enterprises, promoting its use, and also regarding satellites, communication networks with the ITU. We have offices in London, in Washington, in Brussels, in Singapore, in Abu Dhabi, and in South Africa. So this is just to tell you where I come from and also tell you that Access Partnership does an exercise every year regarding the technological trends we see out there in the world. So I encourage you to visit our website. Now, one of the things that might be too very obvious to you is that internet is a means for practicing in individual liberties, the pandemic, this became very important for us to work for health, for security, it became essential to interact. Internet has a 
very high relevance in the case of Mexico, where I come from. This is very, very important, at, even at constitutional level, where we want to guarantee access to the Internet. We include this into the Constitution. But when we have to embark on projects, then it is not so easy to achieve funds. But that is the most obvious things. Now, Internet has to provide networks and services with a very high quality, with high speed, stability, have to be reliable and secure, and in an environment of neutrality. And I mention neutrality because this is of utmost importance. We all have to have access to the entire content in similar conditions. I'm going to speed up a bit because you will tire of me and you will also have me in the next presentation. Don't worry, Miguel, I'm here. And this is something that I found was quite important. I said that we are present in Brussels where, we have, where you have the European Commission. There are documents that have to do with the infrastructure of tomorrow. This is something that is being discussed in the European Commission. And I brought a point here that I think is quite important. We have a new model of networks and services. You have to interact with the cloud, with content delivery networks, with edge, compute, edge computing. And it's not that these become isolated elements. One of the major challenges this poses is how to integrate everything, how to make this work in an adequate way to respond to the user's needs and particularly guaranteeing things as cybersecurity is highlighted by Arturo. So this is a very important topic. We have a new network of networks and services. It's not just one single network, but these become integrated with different elements. So this is a topic that is essential for us. This is a topic that we must always bear in mind when we see how we're going to harmonize all this. Not only do we, is it uh, that you are investing, it's not just one, but uh, a number of parties. We see that uh, among these uh, five keys for the future, I was asked uh, uh, I was asked to say what tendencies we see for the future. Well, the first one is decentralization, being able to control different uh, sectors in the networks, especially in terms of privacy, security, efficiency, speed, stability in different parts. There are issues in which you are already working in uh, as blockchain and things for the future, like it's computing and uh, decentralized apps. Uh, uh, the devices increasingly have uh, intelligence and uh, they have a greater capability for processing. Arturo was saying that when the smartphones got here, it was a revolution, but now they are a daily uh, tool for work. Just to give you an idea, in Mexico, where there's a very high penetration, a relatively high penetration of the internet, the uh, device of choice for most people is a smartphone. That's the main means of access uh, through uh, which people reach the internet. The smartphone has to grow more and it needs to grow more in terms of capacity, uh, AI and uh, increasingly more powerful devices. The big challenge is to do this is in a significant way for the user enabling the user to save time and uh, guarantee their own privacy. And here, uh, speaking of uh, decentralization, let's not forget the cloud, the data centers, uh, storage devices, uh, means of access, everything surrounding the network in a distributed manner. And uh, a key element, of course, cybersecurity in each of these elements. These are the parts that we see that would be point one or the first key for the development of the future in terms of centralization. I would like to position uh, this in your heads that this is the topic, decentralization. And these are some of the elements that we have in this part. The next one we see, I was saying 
My world is more of connectivity in the spectrum, other networks, a greater connectivity through different means. And those different means have to interact properly among each other. And then some of them, for instance, in terms of radioelectric spectrums, uh, open range, uh, uh, having uh, open access with, with different providers and to reduce costs to provide a better connectivity. Local fiber, submarine cable, international accesses, this is something that will continue to grow. It is, and uh, companies like Meta uh, invest in uh, submarine cables. Uh, the IMT, the MT, IMT uh, uh, mobile technologies, 5G, the goal for the target in Europe is to cover all the populations with 5G. And today they are moving slowly in that direction. Then 6G, 7G, God knows uh, how many Gs we'll have in the future. And an, an issue where we are trying to make the most of this is with industry 4.0 is, for instance, with private networks. Security is paramount. And what people want is to separate, uh, isolate, and to be efficient in production plans. So here, maybe the, the idea is not so much to interact in the internet or to what uh, uh, extent it uh, interacts, but uh, because that will certainly increase vulnerability. That needs to be assessed, and uh, that's a very interesting challenge ahead. In satellite uh, um, Issue. Yesterday we talked about uh, the satellites, the low orbit uh, satellites, 400, 500 kilometers uh, from Earth, uh, uh, 1,200 kilometers as to the one way, 550. So uh, they're getting very close. 550. If we, we can even see them go by. They are not uh, UFOs. So and being so near. Uh, shortens the latency. Its latency is much lower, less than 50 milliseconds. So they are part of. Uh, uh, well, that uh, allows us to have a direct access to iPhones and to IMT terminals. So this is one of the issues that are already being studied at the ITU. Um, and uh, the issue of uh, WISP uh, for uh, and and the HAPS, uh, the uh, the drones uh, that uh, fly, for instance, in companies like Alt are trying to develop this so as to provide service with drones as a with a remote radio base that is providing services to remote areas. Yesterday. We were talking about uh, how important these technologies are, where you don't have to take the fiber to the last uh, point of a rural area, but you can provide access through satellites. And HAPS is an additional possibility. And it would also reduce the latency because, of course, uh, they are at a lower altitude. And a key thing, for instance, Mexico, we had a terrible hurricane. And the issue is how to maintain continuity of communications. When people are not connected, people feel defenseless. They have no information. They lose their capability of uh, enjoy the uh, freedoms um, that we talked about. So even it, though it may sound obvious, we need to look for a way to give a continuity through HAPS or satellites. In Mexico, when we had this hurricane, it was the satellites that supported a lot. So what we see increasingly is a greater connectivity, more alternatives for that uh, connectivity, and how to integrate it in a single service for users. So this will continue to change in the future. The third key is uh, privacy and security of uh, information. And this is one of uh, the greatest constraints. Uh, some It's the trust that uh, you may have uh, or not have uh, when using the networks. How can we improve that? Through encryption, either the quantic encryption, but uh, also I was talking to people of the State Department some months ago, and they said that the, their greatest worry was the quantic comp computing that can break any encryption. So 
what can we encrypt what can uh, how fast are they developing tools uh, to uh, break it and the vulnerability of the networks a very important thing and we know that one of the most important elements is culture of all uh, the users in the networks since uh, they exercised, uh, did this exercise of the vul potential vulnerability of LACNIC and how it is necessary to uh, enable the uh, uh, um, uh, two-step authentication. So, of course, we would be fighting ag uh, against uh, a fragmented internet territories like China or Russia or Saudi Arabia. The uh, Arab Emirates that sometimes try to protect uh, their population. And when there's a conflict, we know what happened in the Arab Spring. There's no more communications. That's something that needs to be avoided. Uh, and uh, preserving uh, data, that's also important. There was a discussion on how to preserve the data of uh, the mobile phones having a, reg a record, but who keeps it, who uh, takes care of it, how do you trust uh, people taking care of the, of the data, how can you ensure protection. And another issue that will certainly will come with the next key is intellectual property, industrial property. So the third topic we have is this. It's uh, uh, data security. And the fourth uh, uh, is what we're all talking about, artificial intelligence, where we know that this has an impact on work. What can be one of the impacts in, in this document uh, that uh, is the partnership in analyzing the technological techniques in the matter of public policy? What will be the impact of artificial intelligence in the future of work? To what extent do you have an impact here? And this relates with intellectual property and uh, industrial property. So we sent the little monkey of artificial intelligence to send information and they get everything they can get in the internet. But to what extent is it appropriate? For instance, here I'm using splash uh, photographs uh, that uh, these are public uh, assets uh, that where they just ask us to give some publicity to the per person taking the picture and i loved this picture this is uh, this shows artificial intelligence in a matter of uh, networks it, artificial intelligence is trying to get into how to manage networks and make them more efficient precisely in this new model is how can we access this information in a rapid stable and reliable uh, way and one of the issues that we need to investigate more and more and is being developed uh, in uh, different parts of the world is intelligence applied to the management of networks and uh, traffic and as well as to predict the demand generated by artificial intelligence and with all of this that is being demanded to the networks artificial intelligence is uh, requested to process we have a greater burden and our load and uh, consumption of energy in the places where this processing is occurring and that is why and i go back to central decentralization the capacity of the processing capacity in each device edge computing are issues that are extremely important because they also have an impact on the capacity that a network may have to handle traffic or over the very data centers in the consumption of energy that this is something where artificial intelligence is uh, uh, entering every corner the fifth uh, element is uh, interaction how is it uh, well the enhanced uh, reality virtual reality augmented reality and virtual reality the possibility of generating immersive experiences metaverse and um ooh, with a six gigahertz band for instance generating immersive experiences and more local processing all of the uh, access interfaces Inclu including as Elon Musk uh, 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 speaks of uh, the neural uh, chip uh, the, uh, to, so that the machine may read our thoughts. Some 
easier things so maybe gloves gestures uh, smart clothing and there is no doubt that something that helps a lot in agriculture for instance is iot the internet of things this is another element of interaction generating a, an extremely high demand of ipv6 addresses so those are the five keys that we see uh, for the future a new model of networks and these five keys we have to drive the development of this uh, uh, model decentralization, greater connectivity, privacy and security of information, artificial intelligence, and interaction. So, thank you for giving me this opportunity to be with you today, and thank you for this for allowing me to interact. I'll be uh, ready to uh, have a, a chat with you uh, as uh, Apollo already. Well, I see many people that uh, I've known for many years and that uh, I really like. I'll be available for discussions. Thank you. Thank you, Fernando. All right. Fernando gave us his outlook, um, describing those five keys for the future. And now we'll see the part where we want to know your opinion. Frida is turning 20. This year we are celebrating. Uh, we're celebrating our anniversary. And what we are going to do is to adapt one of the categories as I said, uh, we have three categories for applications for projects to support in terms of stability, security, connectivity, and access, and open uh, and uh, free internet. We want you to tell us which should be this fourth category. We're going to use these five ideas, these five outlooks that Fernando told us as a trigger for brainstorming in this exercise. So the idea is to encourage you to participate, but we'd also like you to not only focus on these five options, but if you think of any additional one, there is room to add the one, that one. We're going to use the AHA slides. I think you are familiar with this. Some already participated during the week. You have to scan this QR code. For those who are following us remotely, please enter that in the chat. So from now until Friday, we're going to receive voting and suggestions for topic. We're going to process later on. And using that information, we're going to select this topic that, as a community, you tell us is the most relevant one and that we should be supporting through the FRIDA program. So. Laura told me that if I could come here, well, she invited me once again, so I guess I didn't do that badly the first time. So as Laura was saying, please connect the URL or this QR code. And if you didn't pay too att much attention to what Fernando was telling us, let us recap on what we have just seen. The first topic is decentralization. So here we're referring to blockchain, edge computing, decentralized apps, integration of the elements that interact in the network, cloud storage, and security. So if you think that that is important, please vote for that. Then we have greater connectivity, fiber, local, international access, IMT, satellite, light access, waste, and continuity in emergency situations. You would know that many of these categories are already available in FRIDA. We have that of the internet security and stability and access. But what FRIDA would like to know is how relevant these categories still are, such as privacy and access. Are they still relevant? or? have these been overcome by the other categories that we'll be seeing here. So even though some are repeated, we would like to have your feedback. And then privacy and information security, encryption, free flow of information, safeguarding information, intellectual property, artificial intelligence, AI applied to networks and traffic, AI generated demand, and then interaction, virtual reality, immersive experiences, Internet of Things, all the wearables, 
that we have in digital interaction between humans and digital options. So is this moving at all? Does this react somehow? OK. There we are. Yes, perfect. That's high tech. Google Docs should do something like that, too. <laughs> like Laura was saying, so let us not dwell too much on that and say AI has won. We have time until Friday, so please enter the social media, share this HR code so everyone else can vote. This will be open until Friday noon or prior to the closure of the event. So please vote and there will be awards loaded and authorize anything so I cannot hand out chocolates or anything. So bear in mind that you are contributing to the development of Frida and the development of internet in the region. Uh, view it as such, this option. So thank you, Arturo. Thank you, everyone. And like Arturo is saying, this will be open until Friday noon. Let me tell you that we'll be at LACNIC's booth. For those of you who haven't heard about Frida before and want to learn more about this, because this call will be opened at the end of May. On May 29, we'll be opening the call to receive projects and initiatives to receive awards. So if you should know more about that, please come to our booth. So we have finished with this session. Thank you very much to all of you for participating. And now I'll give the floor to Miguel Ignacio Entrada, who is a strategic manager relations.